Ben Roethlisberger retired Thursday. Tom Brady's talking about maybe retiring. Everyone's wondering what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. And it makes you wonder, as we get ready to see all these young quarterbacks play in the AFC Championship and the NFC Championship, where do all these Super Bowl champion quarterbacks rank historically? We're going to debate that in the first segment of today's show. Then we're going to talk about the NFL coaching hires. The first wave has been underway. And who is going where? What are the best fits so far? And who should be still on the block and being looked at? And then, of course, there will be discussion on the show, Locked on NFL Podcast, about those conference championship games. I'm Chris Carter here with your boy Q. It's going to be a fun one. Let's get into it. <laughs> Are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with your boy Q, and it's another Friday edition of the show. Remember, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and especially YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to get all the Locked On NFL uh, uh, con content that we give you there. It's not just this show, but there's several different clips that you'll get on YouTube every day if you're checking out here on Locked On NFL. Q, how you doing, my man? Man, I'm blessed. Uh, it's always exciting, man, when you get to this type of uh, this type of year, uh, this this part of the year. You know, when you get to the end of the season and it's the conference championship weekend, and you get to see who's going to go on to the Super Bowl. Uh, it's it's fun. It's exciting. It's a little bittersweet because you know that the season's about to get wrapped up, but it's still a lot of fun to talk about. So, uh, the more football, the better. Let's do it. Absolutely, it's it's going to be a fun weekend. Um, but while we're looking forward, there's a lot of people, especially here in Pittsburgh, who are looking back because Ben Roethlisberger announced his retirement from the NFL after 18 seasons, drafted in 2004, two-time Super Bowl champion, three-time AFC champion. Uh, he retires with the second most game-winning drives in NFL history, right behind Peyton Manning. Uh, one Actually, he had 53 and Peyton Manning had 54. He's tied with Tom Brady and Drew Brees in that category. Uh, he owns all the Steelers passing records. He's up there in the top 10 in several major and pretty much all the major categories in NFL passing records. And, you know, everyone's talking about him, Q. He, he had a legendary career. Um, but one thing that I think that everyone looks at is that we're talking about, you know, maybe Tom Brady retiring. Aaron Rodgers, what's he going to do next? You know, both the Manning brothers are are, are gone. And we're looking at a weekend where it's Patrick Mahomes versus Joe Burrow and Jimmy Garoppolo versus Matt Stafford. And all these guys that are about to be, they're still going to be around for the next several years. And we, we've been, you and I, we've been watching football for the last two decades. And these guys, these, those earlier names I said, they've defined the quarterback position. And it's an interesting spot to be in now thinking about like, wow, their, their time has really come and they're phasing out of the game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we all know that this time is going to come for every quarterback, you know, regardless if you play 20 years or you play 10 years or you play five years. I mean, uh, the NFL stands for not for long, you know, and Tom Brady has done some great things. And uh, Big Ben, to his credit, has done some great things. And of course, there's that wave of quarterback that you mentioned, you know, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben, you know, guys like that. The name Drew Brees, obviously he retired already, but oh, there was that wave of quarterback. And now we're looking at the Patrick Mahomes, the Joe Burrows, not really the Jimmy G's or the Matt Stafford's, in my opinion. I know some people really highly regard Matt Stafford but me not so much but still uh they're, not even they're, after last week you no I mean he's a hell of a quarterback don't get me wrong but I and, and he's done some really good things this is the thing about it like I see why Sean uh McVay went and made the move and, and got rid of Jared Goff and brought in Matt Stafford but I don't think I could ever put him in the elite category because I don't think there's enough left he could do in his career to be elite now if he goes to two three three Super Bowls in a row or whatever and goes and wins three Super Bowls then maybe I'll start to you know renegotiate my conversations but I mean you know, he hasn't been to the dance yet. He's got to get to the dance before we start talking about that elite category. I think he's really good, but I'll never put him in the elite category unless he does some really outstanding stuff on the back end of his conversation uh, of, his, of his career. But back to this conversation, I just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you talk about Big Ben, man, I mean, you talk about a guy that's got the he's called Big Ben for a reason, just his size. The one thing I always liked about him and you obviously know it a lot better than others because, you know, you cover the locked on Steelers. You do a fantastic job with that. I just love the fact that I, I feel like no play was ever, ever over. You know, right. sometimes sometimes that's probably to his fault. 
And sometimes that's probably where mistakes happen. But you never, ever thought that a play was just done because he always, especially earlier in his career, he always fought. He always kept plays alive. He always found ways to have scramble drills. And really, that's what helped make A.B. A.B. because him and A.B. always had a great opportunity to connect on those scramble drills. I always really respected that about Big Ben. I mean, he never gave up on a play. I mean, there, there was a game against the Ravens where Haloti Nada really literally reached through his face mask and broke his nose. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. And he played through that game. He eventually threw the game winning touchdown. Like it was yeah. just, it was, a, it was, he, he, he's been that guy. But the, all these questions, all this reminiscing, all this nostalgia begs the question, you know, where do guys like him rank amongst each other? And Adam Rank did a very interesting uh interesting article on nfl.com ranking the 12 quarterbacks who have won multiple super bowls uh on this list so i want to run down through some of these guys and get your opinions on where they are if they're too high or too low you ready for me i'm always ready all right first off number 12 bob greasy with the dolphins i, I mean yeah. number 12 is fine i'm not gonna act like i you know monitored bob greasy's whole career he's to me he's more of a um uh, you know, as a guy who's on the broadcast instead of a quarterback, that's my fault. Now, your boy, th this would be one of your boys because he's a Raider, Jim Plunkett, winning two Super Bowls and losing none with the Raiders. He's at number eleven. Yeah, I mean, eleven. I don't, I don't mind. I mean, you're still top fifteen. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame or at least in the conversation for the Hall of Fame, just because everything he was able to do. But uh, that's a conversation for another day. But number eleven, I mean, you know, whatever. You're you're close to top ten. I'm okay with that. Now, numbers 10 and 9 are of the same quarterback draft class. And, of course, uh, you know, we're talking about Ben Roethlisberger and Eli Manning. But Big Ben is number 10, Eli Manning number 9. You know, it's it's real funny. All Both of them have iconic touchdown or, or iconic throws, period, yeah. In, yeah. In, in, yeah. in the Super Bowl. But I, I, I wonder if the reason they gave Eli Manning the edge is because in his games, he beat Tom Brady both times. Right. And it, in the in the, the the Ben lost a Super Bowl, and also in his first Super Bowl, he didn't play well. The defense kind of right. car carried him, and Antoine Randall had to throw a touchdown. I wonder if that's what gave Eli Manning the edge there. Well, I mean, having a loss for me, having a loss puts him at, at number ten, and Eli at number nine. And then, like you mentioned, you know, Eli knocking off the Patriots, especially that undefeated team, yep. and the way that he did it. I, I think that that just gives him the edge. I know a lot of people don't like to really give, and I'm not talking about you, but a lot of people don't like to give Eli a lot of credit. But man, he still had to make those throws when he had to. So he and he did, and against nah. the Patriots. So I, I I don't mind nine and ten. I don't mind Big Ben being number ten right there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too mad at though. I will say that touchdown pass to San Antonio Holmes, I still think is the, is the is the best quarterback pass, is the best touchdown pass we've ever seen in the Super Bowl. Just I could agree over, with that. Th over three dudes, like that I moment is legendary. That. Yeah, now absolutely. moving down the line, we got back to back Cowboys here. Staubach at eight, okay. Troy Aikman at seven. Staubach went two and two with the Cowboys, took him to four, one half of them. Of course, the two that he lost were to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. Uh, Troy Aikman went three and oh, he took down the Steelers. Um, and I believe he, what he took down the Bills twice, was it? Or was it? I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting my so. Super Bowl years right. But I believe it was the Bills twice. But I mean, hey, that was the team of the 90s, the, those Cowboys right. a, a, with Aikman. Yeah, I mean, that was a three-headed monster, you know, Irvin, Aikman, and, uh, and Emmett. So uh, I think that uh, they got it right on that one. I think that uh, Troy being 3-0, and again, losses matter to me. I know losses don't matter to everyone because some people will say it's better to be there uh, more times. And even if you're going to lose a couple, uh, similar to the Buffalo Bills, losing four of them, you know. But they were there four times, you know. That's what we hear all the time on Radio Row. You know, hey, but our teams were there. And that's cool. I respect that. But they also lost four times. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, Aikman being there at that spot ahead of uh, Staubach is fine. Uh, of course, Cowboy fans, enthusiasts will always say that Staubach is the man. You know, it's just for the historian factor and you know, everything that he was able to do, uh, not only in the league, but also uh, military-wise as well. So uh, always hold Roger Staubach in high regards. But Troy Aikman being one spot ahead of him was fine with me. Now, here is where I start to really dis disagree with him, is that Manning is number – Peyton Manning is number okay. six. Okay. He went – Two and two in the Super Bowl, one one and one with the Colts and one and one with the Broncos. If you if, if we're basing this on Super Bowl performances, right. and again, Adam Rank might have raked this however, however, which way he did. Peyton was never great in the Super Bowl. In the 
you know, his team basically was just outperformed the Bears. But I mean, he threw 247 yards, a touchdown, and an interception against the Bears. And then we all know he was a passenger in the in the Broncos Super Bowl yeah. when Vaughn Miller and them just crushed uh, the, the Carolina Panthers. He didn't throw a touchdown in that one. I, I feel like I, I Peyton gets a, get, is getting a bit of a bump because of his the rest of his play. But as far as a Super Bowl quarterback, I, I would actually take probably maybe you know, Aikman, Staubach, and, and maybe even his brother and Ben over Peyton because. Uh, he didn't perform it in, in the Super Bowl when it when it came down to those moments. I think Peyton just gets the Peyton bump. You know what I yeah. mean? Like he, he just like the like the Patrick Price. He gets the Peyton push or whatever it is. I mean he gets he gets that love because he's Peyton Manning and and that's who he is. Uh, again, I agree with you. When he won with the Broncos, he definitely wasn't the reason for it. It was that defense and Von Miller. Uh, he was an absolute stud in that Super Bowl. Uh, that was against the Carolina Panthers and the Bears. Who was the quarterback for the Bears? Was that Grossman? Yeah, it was Rex Grossman. Ugh, I mean, that tells that's gross. You know, it's gross yeah. in itself. But <laughs> I mean, they got there. They still won. And, you know, I, I think we're kind of splitting hairs at this point. Him being number six isn't a shock to me just because, again, he's Peyton Manning. I'm actually surprised that they didn't find a way to put him a little bit higher. Yeah, same here. But I mean, again, the, 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 he threw a pick six to lose to the Saints and he got crushed by the Seahawks. That's why he wants it now. Number five is Bart Starr. I mean, won the first two Super Bowls. I feel like that's that's just kind of a nod there. Well, historical. Yeah, yeah, that little bit of history there. But I'm interested in this top four that we got here. Okay, here because, we go. Because um, Terry Bradshaw comes in at number four. Four and zero with the Steelers. Four and zero, and he came at number no. four. And he can't exactly like wow. how how is he four and zero at number four? Now I can understand number three because because we all know who one and two are. Those those, those right. guys are evident. Right, but, right. Brady and Montana. Yeah, Brady, Brady, Montana. One, one and two. We know who those right. guys are. Three, but, but for te- Number three is John Elway. I don't get that. What in the what in the world? I get that he went to five Super Bowls, but he lost three of them. Right. And, right. and the two that he won is because Terrell Davis carried him there. I, I, I no, you're right. You're right. I don't disagree with you on that one. You can't lose. You can't have a losing record in the Super Bowl and be ahead of a guy that is undefeated four and zero in Terry Bradshaw. And really, if I'm Troy Aikman, I'm looking up too, thinking. Wait a minute, I was three and zero. This dude is two and three. Yeah. Uh, look, John Elway, Hall of Famer. Awesome Absolutely. quarterback. You know, he was a guy that, you know, Mr. Comeback, he was never out of a game. I mean, he did so many great things with his arms and his legs. He was an Iron Man. Don't get me wrong. None of that I'm trying to take away from him. But if you got Bradshaw at 4 0, you got to give him that bump, in my opinion. I mean, he's yeah. number, the number two guy is 4 0, right? Uh, the number two guy is 4 0 because it's Joe Montana. Right. I mean, he I'm was saying. he was the next, the, you know, Bradshaw dominated the 70s. Uh, Montana dominated the '80s, and you also look. I mean, Bradshaw had to go through Staubach, and Staubach right. was on this on this very list. I think that's part of what built uh, Bradshaw's legacy is that he was able to win some of those duels. Um, and then, of course, Tom Brady being number one, seven Super Bowls. He's seven and three. I mean, he's been to ten Super Bowls. That's just ridiculous. That's dumb. Um, that's just yeah, dumb. <laughs> that's just dumb. Uh, it's just it's it's stupid numbers. Um, but you know, Joe Joe Cool, you know, he never threw an interception in the postseason. Like, like that's. Right. That's something that, that you can't shake off Montana. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I'm not mad at the top two, but I don't get Elway being boosted above Bradshaw, uh, really above star. Um, I, I could hold him above Manning maybe a little bit, but not Aikman, honestly, not Staubach either. Cause again, Staubach's only two losses were to Terry Bradshaw in, right. you know, in, in a legendary Steelers team. So a few guys there, I'm a little, I'm a little eh about, but an interesting least list to say the least. Hey, but, you know, we started this whole thing off talking about Big Ben and him for being top 10 right there as far as Super Bowl winners and everything. You can't get mad at that at all. No. You know, can't get mad at that. I, I can appreciate that. And, again, I know that there was controversy in Big Ben's, uh, you know, career, and I know that people aren't really big fans of him outside of Pittsburgh. There's a lot of fan bases that can't stand him. But uh, I just got to tip the cap to a hell of a career, a hell of a player, and uh, really did some good things for that quarterback position in general from a small school on top of that. Absolutely. Yeah. He came from Miami, Ohio. No one, right. you know, we, you know, no one really knew it. that's not known for any, producing all these great talents. Right. Uh, he was from the Mac. So uh, definitely did his thing and put in, uh, you know, put his, his, his mark on the NFL map uh, and was really a part of a generation of quarterbacks that, you know, was truly great for the NFL. Right. For sure. Uh, so that's definitely interesting, but we've talked a lot about the past. Let's talk a little bit about the future because the coaching situation is starting to change oh, no. up here in the NFL. Q's excited because he's his team's in the mix here. We're gonna do that in a second here because it's gonna be really important to see where uh you know where where a lot where a lot of these teams go. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but first, 
we're 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 talking to some, some of our sponsors here, and y'all know if we're look if we're talking here, we're gonna be giving coming coming real with y'all, and we're gonna be be talking about get upside get upside of course is the great app that you could that you can make money back for just filling up a t- filling up a tank of gas hey Steelers fans and Raiders fans and NFL fans go download the get upside app right now it's an easy way to make your money back if you go to the app right now it's for free on Apple Apple Store or uh, Google Play you can use the promo code touchdown for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up at, at, at the tank you get cash back right away. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. You can get cash back on the Get Upside app anytime you fill up your car with gas. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two or three hundred dollars a year in cash back, and there's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Get Upside app and use promo code Touchdown to get twenty-five cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Again, that's promo code Touchdown on the get upside app we're also brought to you by bet online we'd like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march through the playoffs and beyond bet online reigns the number one spot for all the best sport sports wagering action for 2022 new it's a new year and with a new year there's new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and, and you get a chance to to, to get a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit just be, be sure to use the promo code locked on it's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n locked on and you'll get that 50 percent welcome bonus when you sign up at betonline.ag from football to basketball to hockey to boxing to ufc right down to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022 bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts Q, back to talking about the coaching hires because we do have some developments there. Um, first, uh, we could talk, we could definitely talk about uh the Bears getting Colts defensive coordinator Matt Eber, Matt, Matt Eberflus. Uh yep. that's an interesting hire to the head coaching position. Um, I, I was curious where which direction they'd go here because mm-hmm. they're getting a defensive minded coach and they have Justin Fields. I, I thought they might try to go with a guy that was more offensive minded, say, how can we tailor around this franchise quarterback that we just made sure to get in this last draft. But they tried that already, right? I mean, not necessarily <laughs> with Justin Fields, but they tried to go with the offensive guru to get things kick-started, and they went with Matt Nagy, and it didn't work out very well. And obviously, he didn't know what to do with Justin Fields. And I, I like the Eberflus hiring. You know, I've been following him for a while since he was in Dallas. He was the linebacker's coach, and I remember they tried to hold on to him, but he eventually moved on to uh, the Indianapolis Colts and really did a good job with, as a defensive coordinator there. And so I, I like that because – when you think of the Chicago Bears, what do you think of? Defense. Yeah, you know, that's not yeah. their identity, you know, so it kind of gives them a badass, you know, let's just put it like that. It kind of gives them a badass there in the Windy City, and I think they need a little bit of that. So they're going to ca- try to get back to their, you know, their ways that they were when they had Vic Fangio as their defensive coordinator, and they were really good. Now, all he has to do, in my opinion, is just go and get an offensive guy, you know, find somebody That's who's true. Can be a really offensive good coordinator. Maybe he can go and get a Pep Hamilton. You know, maybe he can go get someone else that has their finger on the pulse of being a, uh, you know, a creative offensive mind and then make them work really well with Justin Fields. And he just kind of CEOs everything. But I think Chicago getting back to their roots defense. I think that that's the best route for them. So I, I, I kind of like that Eberflus hiring. I was wondering how long it was going to take him to get a job. And now he got one. So I'm excited to see what he does moving forward. Now, the Denver Broncos went out and, and got the opposite direction. They went and got Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive yeah. coordinator for the Packers. Now, he is an offensive guru. This guy worked with Aaron Rodgers. Now, a lot of people have tried to say, oh, well, that's just them just trying to line it up so they can get Aaron Rodgers right. from because there was the, you know, the talk about hit Aaron Rodgers going to the Broncos last year. Uh, I, I've seen some people, and Cody Rourke, I think, as well, you kind of dispute that and say this isn't a, like a guaranteed you get that guy and this guy will come. If you build it, he will come right. type, type of situation. Right. But they do want to build, a, you know, an offense offense that works you know Denver's had some really talented defenses over the years but they've been let down by not having that quarterback I mean really since Peyton Manning left yeah no really yeah you're right and the thing about it is it's funny I just talked about Chicago and they went with the offensive minded guy and then they flipped it and went defense well the Broncos had that defensive minded guy it didn't work so now they went with the offense and you know I, I like this hire because talking to Peter Bukowski and listening to him on on locked on Packers Hackett is a guy that has a lot of energy you know he's he's a smart coach uh, like you said he's worked with Aaron Rodgers helped coach him up you know he's got a good creative mind my problem is that when he was in Green Bay he wasn't calling the plays you know, he wasn't calling the offensive plays. That was uh, that was not him. That was obviously the head coach, uh, Mar- uh, Matt LaFleur. And uh, I just – I don't know. 
I don't know how this is going to work out. You know, he hasn't. Co- I don't think he's called plays in a while since he was in Jacksonville. And uh, and I, I heard that he did some really good things with Blake Bortles there. So that could work out. But there's a lot of questions in Denver offensively. Now, if they go get Aaron Rodgers, a lot of those questions go away. Uh, but like you said, this is not a guarantee that they're going to go get Rodgers and Devontae Adams, uh, something that a lot of people are trying to associate. Oh, well, if you go get one, you're going to get all three of them. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't see that happening. You know, yeah. I don't think the Green Bay is going to let that happen. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see Rodgers and v- Adams back in uh, Green Bay next season. But, uh, I mean, hey, it's 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 worth a shot if you're Denver. What I mean, I don't want to say what do you have to lose, but your offense has been pretty piss poor uh, leading up to now. So maybe this guy, Hackett, could help t- turn the corner a little bit. Uh, apparently he's a, a quarterback whisperer, so we'll see. Uh, but I think that they need to do better than Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater if they're going to have a chance. No, I agree with that. Now, of course – the other hire to look to look at here is Josh McDaniels getting back into the coaching game reportedly with your Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, McDaniels had a stint with uh, you guys as buddies in the in, in the yep. AFC West. Um, you know, just do you know with the with the with the Broncos for a bit. He went out to eight no start, and then they finished eight and eight on the season, and then really never caught back on. There's a lot of talk about Josh McDaniels what he could bring. What's the hype in Las Vegas around this right now? No Raider fan is happy about this report. You know, I mean, really? No, no Raider fan is happy about this. And I don't really, I mean, I do understand why, because of what he did in Denver and he flamed out and he traded up to go get Tim Tebow. And we all know how that shook out. And, you know, then he left the Colts at the altar, you know. And so uh, there's a lot of different things about McDaniel. Plus, he's a Patriot. He comes from the Patriots. So, of course, nobody likes the Patriots. But I think that the dude is a very good offensive mind. I think that's why the Colts wanted him. Obviously, it worked out really well with Frank Reich anyway. But uh, he 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 helped Cam Newton win seven games there in New England. He helped a rookie quarterback get to the playoffs. I mean, there's a lot of things that like offensively. And look, the Raiders struggled, man. They struggled in the red zone. He had a really good red zone offense with the Patriots last year. I think it was top 10. Uh, the Raiders weren't. He had a really good third down percentage offensively. The Raiders didn't. I mean, there's a lot of things to like. And on top of that, uh, I believe if Josh McDaniels, who's going to interview on Saturday with the Silver and Black, if he does get the job, that means that Dave Ziegler, who also comes from the Patriots, is going to be the GM most likely. You know, he's already mm-hmm. interviewed with Mark Davis for the GM. So they're trying to establish a structure. And, and the one thing that another that the other, uh, you know, factor why Raider Nation is not excited about it. Every time someone hires a Patriots guy and they want to try to do it the Patriot way, it really oh, doesn't work out. You know, so. Work. Uh, you know, the Raiders are the next team that if if they do, in fact, go hire him, they're going to say, OK, we're going to try the Patriot way and the Patriot structure here in, in Las Vegas. And look, I'll tell you, the team needs structure. They need a, a solid. They do. Sure. there. they need to have a strong GM. They need someone to go in there and get the player personnel, get quality guys out of the draft, make smart hires in the free in free agencies, put out good contracts. They need to do a lot of that that they haven't really done. So I think that if they do go make the move, it's worth the shot again. A lot of Patriot moves have not worked out very well, but I think it's it's worth the shot. I think uh, the other factor why Raider Nation is not excited about it, most people are hung up on Jim Harbaugh and Ed Dodds, and they really want those two guys uh, because that was the dream matchup that, that Raider Nation had in their mind, and it, it, it doesn't look like it's going to materialize. I didn't think it was going to happen to begin with. I thought Harbaugh was just leveraging the Raiders as far as just to get his money back from Michigan that they took when they, uh, they cut his salary last season before he went on to beat Ohio State and get to the playoffs. So I never thought Harbaugh was reality, uh, and it doesn't look like it is now. So it sounds like McDaniels, uh, this has some real wheels to it. It seems like it, he might be the leader in the clubhouse right now for the job, but we won't know until Saturday. That's when he's interviewing. So uh, it's kind of one of those we'll wait and see type modes. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that the, the, the famed Patriots coach is going to fix right. such and such organization, yep. you know, whether it's Romeo Cornell, whether it's Matt Patricia, whether it's Josh yep. McDaniels or Bill yep. O'Brien or any one of these number of names. They've None of them have worked out. And it makes you wonder, was the Patriot way really just, hey, Tom Brady, play for us? Uh, because Maybe. Well, because they got to the playoffs this year, though. They got to the playoffs, then and then they got smoked as bad as the Steelers did, and they had their rookie quarterback. But they got to the playoffs with a rookie quarterback. Hey, hey, hey! They Neither me or you believed in when he went into the draft. Neither me. Hey, hey, that, that's very, that's guy. very true. But the Patriot way is winning Super Bowls, and right. I, I was like, hmm, sure. you know. For and sure. so I, I'm intrigued to see how they do in the coming years. Um, you know, Mac Jones caught people off guard when people saw saw a little bit more tape on him. They're like, oh, he likes to do that. Okay, let's take that right. away. Yeah. And uh, they they faltered down the stretch. I'm intrigued to see if the Patriot again. They haven't made it work nowhere else 
Right. Maybe they do with, with Flores Las Vegas. Was good, though. Flores was good, in my opinion. In, in Flores my is opinion. the one is what I said. But again, Flores made them competitive, but no yeah. one has has re, right. re, re, you know, uh, rep, replicated. And a lot of people want to say Mike Vrabel is, but Mike Vrabel never coached under Belichick. He was a linebacker for him. Right. That's right. one thing I think that people m- mis- mistake yeah, about. Yeah, he coached so. in Houston first, and then he uh, and then mm-hmm. he ended up in Tennessee. So yeah, you're right, right about that. Interesting. So I sometimes I I wonder about people when they try to they try to make that a right. thing and make that a narrative. But all those coaching hires are still plenty of openings out there. It's going to be really intriguing to see who lands where. Of course, Brian Flores is a big story in the NFL right now. Where will he go? It seems like we're probably going to hear more throughout this weekend, just with yeah. how negotiations are stepping up right now. Um, more everyone's interviewing people. We're gonna. It's going to be really, really interesting to see where people land. Land and also with Sean Payton gone, you know what's up next for the Saints. You know what, what's right. going to happen with them. Um, you know, so I, I'm really intrigued to see how how these openings start to play out. I am too, man. And every year on the average is about six to eight openings. There was nine this year after Sean Payton made his announcement earlier in the week. So nine uh, openings. That's a lot. And I'm ex- excited to see where everyone lands. And I love the fact that this year people are and, and teams are taking their time. They're not rushing into it as quickly as normal. Mo- normally it's like, boom, as soon as the season's over, okay, you guys are all fired. Boom. The next week you guys are all hired. You know what I mean? It's like yep. this year, everyone's taking their time. There's GM searches, their head coaches searches. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different names that are still out there. Like a D'Amico Ryan's is still out there. He's a, he's obviously the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. He's getting a lot of steam. He might end up in Minnesota. I I mean, there's there's a lot going on to like. And so I'm excited. Flores, like you mentioned, Dayball uh, looks like he's going to be the guy in New York. Uh, maybe Jacksonville will finally wake up and hire Brian, Byron Leftwich. I don't know what they're doing. They're playing with their food. But there's a lot of good stuff going on, man, and, and I'm excited about it. Certainly is. There's a lot of excitement going on with the conference championship weekend. We'll have more on that after this next break. But before, first, we got to talk to you guys about Bill Bar. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your New Year's resolution because they taste so good that you'll actually want to eat them, unlike other protein bars that can be chalky, waxy, or just taste downright nasty. Built Bars are the protein bars that taste like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar because when you want to eat healthy, you're, you're getting bored of your diet. You're like, oh, where's the chocolate? Built Bars are covered in chocolate, but the best thing is they're covered in chocolate while also only having 130 calories, only having four grams of sugar, and only having four net carbs while packing 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the average candy bar that has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. That's a much better option for you. So get rid of all your snack stations. Get rid of all your secret stashes where you got junk food that's just gonna that's just not going to help your diet. Replace them with Built Bars. And if you go to Built.com, you'll find out that there's so many flavors that could work out for you and make for tasty treats that are healthy and good for you and keep you on your diet plan. Those flavors can have the, the coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, you name it, it's probably there. You just got to go to built.com to see all the different flavors they're introducing new every single month. Go to built.com right now and you can use promo code LOCK15. That's L O C K E D 1 5 LOCK15 to get 15% off at built.com when you order your next order of built bars. And that's built.com using promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your next order of Built Bars. And right now, we're going to do a quick switch here. Now, normally, Q and I, we break it down. We give you our picks. But we wanted to give you guys a look at the Locked On Now podcast because they're yep. doing we, – we, we're doing the national, but Locked On Now does everything across the board. So if you want more than Locked On Now podcast, you can go to find that wherever – podcasts are hosted uh on the locked on nfl nba nhl all the youtube channels that 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 we that we have there so check out everybody the super bowl is right around the corner and this weekend we're gonna find out who goes to the big game in los angeles here to break it down are our local experts covering the four remaining conference championship teams the way that only we can do here on the locked on podcast network here's everything you need to know about this weekend's games on the locked on now podcast Coming up, Championship Sunday is just days away, and we've got to punch two tickets to the Super Bowl. Who will serve as the reigning AFC and NFC champions for the year to come? We'll find out what each team still standing needs to do to earn a conference title on Locked On Now NFL. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. You're listening.
listening to Locked On Now NFL, local experts on the biggest stories throughout the NFL. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Our Locked On NFL hosts are here to look ahead to the NFC and AFC championship games. Let's start where these teams are trying to get to Los Angeles, SoFi Stadium. They will host the Super Bowl in two weeks, but first, the Rams have to host the 49ers for the NFC crown. The Biggest Game. San Francisco 49ers fans don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo will be their starting quarterback next season, but they do know that he'll be under center to try to win his second NFC Championship game in three years against the Rams on Sunday. With a chance to remain undefeated against the NFC in the postseason, our Locked On 49ers host says the key to a San Francisco victory is Jimmy G not making the big mistakes that could cost the Niners the whole game. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, former NFL and AFL defensive back Eric Crocker, and I am one half of the Locked On 49ers crew here to give you your 49ers main key to victory as they travel to Levi South and take on the Los Angeles. Rams in the NFC Championship game. All right. I, I think this this game, it begins and ends with the play of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, if I had to give it just one main key victory here, it's Jimmy G, don't turn the ball over. And if you do, just limit it. So right now, 49ers, the way I see it, Jimmy G, one turnover. That's all we're giving you, just one. Anything more than that, it would be trouble for the San Francisco 49ers. All right, so that's going to do it, man. I hope you guys appreciate that. Make sure you guys listen to our show as well, Locked On 49ers, the best show on the Locked On Network podcast. Let's go, 49ers, win this game this Sunday. Matthew Stafford picked up his first playoff win just a couple of weeks ago, and now he's a win away from playing the biggest football game on the planet in the Rams' home stadium. Our Locked On Rams host tells you how L.A. gets the veteran QB to the Super Bowl he's chased for 12 whole seasons. Hey, it's Travis Rogers from Locked On Rams. So here is the one key to victory this weekend for the Rams in the NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. Remember when you used to play with matches as a kid and maybe you'd get away with it once in a while and a couple of weeks, months, years later, you realize how bad of an idea that was that you could have burned the whole house down? That was the Rams in Tampa against the Bucks. They were playing with matches. They turned it over way too many times. Four turnovers in that game. Somehow they escaped. Somehow they beat Tom Brady despite turning it over four different times. If they're going to beat the Niners, they simply cannot do that. They might be able to get away with one. Two is probably the end of the wrap. And anything more than that, it is absolutely not going to happen for you there. You can check out more about the Los Angeles Rams on my podcast, Locked on Rams, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. It is free and available on all platforms, your team, every day. The Kansas City Chiefs played the Cincinnati Bengals just a few weeks ago at the end of the regular season, and since he won. So how do the Chiefs make sure that that doesn't happen again with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line? Our Locked on Chiefs says a combination of learning from the mistakes of that game and keeping the momentum going from last week will add up to a big win. But he has more on the details. The AFC Championship game comes down to two things for the Kansas City Chiefs. Can Patrick the Reaper Mahomes continue his run as we saw against the Bills? And can the Chiefs defense and its staff learn its lesson from the last time they played the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm Ryan Tracy from Locked On Chiefs, and that's what it comes down to. You saw an extraordinary effort by the offense, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, to not only get to overtime, but then win it. They don't need to do that. They have to avoid it, in fact, in order to get this win against a team that is nearly as explosive. On the other side, you have to be careful if you're Steve Spagnuolo or anyone out there on the field on the defensive side of the ball to not overreact to what you saw the last time when Jamar Chase destroyed that secondary on a circus catch after circus catch. Tyron Matthews should be back and playing in this ballgame. That helps. You have to adjust, and you have to play over the top, and you have to try to take Chase and limit him. Not take him away, because then you're devoting too many other resources to that, and someone else is going to hurt you. I think they're going to play more zone. I think they have to back off and let Joe Mixon hurt them if he can. They'll live with that, and that will get them the win. For more on this game and your Chiefs, check out Locked On Chiefs. We're free on every platform. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Joe Burrow took a beating last week as he fought his way into the AFC Championship game. And while Cincinnati does already have a win against Kansas City under its belt this season, our Locked On Bengals host says that the team can't get a second one if it doesn't keep its quarterback on his feet. Will the Bengals take down the Chiefs on Sunday in Kansas City in advance to the Super Bowl? Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine of the Locked On Bengals podcast. And that is the question going into this epic AFC championship game between two teams that played each other this month. They played each other on January 2nd at Paul Brown Stadium. The Bengals came out victorious 34-31, to 31, overcoming three different 14-point deficits. I expect Sunday to be a different story. The Bengals can't fall behind against this Chiefs team by two scores and expect a rally on the road. But the number one key, protect Joe Burrow. Burrow was sacked nine times last week against the Titans. He was hit 13 times. And yeah, the offense had 19 points. Well, 19 points isn't going to cut it against Patrick Mahomes. The magic number, 40. If they can somehow get to 40, you feel good about their chances. How do they do that? They keep Joe Burrow upright. If they do that, he can distribute the ball to all of his weapons, including Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd in the Bengals just might sneak in to the Super Bowl. For more, make sure you check out the free and the only daily Bengals podcast, Locked On Bengals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. That's a wrap for us here. Thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every day. For more on the National Football League and your team, make your second listen, Locked On NFL and your team's Locked On Podcast. I'm Kim Becker. This has been Locked On Now, Locked On your team every day. And there you have it. If you want more from the Locked On Now podcast, be sure to check them out. They're for free everywhere. Just like the Locked On NFL, Locked On NBA, Locked On NHL, Locked On MLB. All of those podcast channels are free everywhere, especially on YouTube. From Chris Carter, from your boy Q, thanks so much for checking us out for another episode of the Locked On NFL podcast. We'll be back on Monday with more from Bo Brack on how this weekend played out. So stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of great action there. We will see. Hey, who you got real quick? Who you got oh, real quick? Got, well, oh, yo, so I'm yeah, not we already heard the preview. We didn't break it down, but who do you got this weekend? I, I Kansas got Chiefs, City Cincinnati. I, I got, I got Chiefs-Rams. Chiefs Rams, I'm going Rams Bengals. Let's Whoa, go. Cincy. You're riding. You're riding with Cincy. Ride you're riding with Cincy. Cincy. The there Bengals you go. fans have turned me into believers. Who they? Oh geez, look, 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 look at this guy. Well, I think it's going to be an interesting one uh, for for sure all weekend long. But from Chris Carden, your boy Q, thanks so much for checking out the Locked On NFL podcast. Check us out anywhere you check out podcasts for free. Um, and uh, we'll be catching which catch you next week as we're getting ready for the Pro Bowl and talk about all the all the new new probably new coaching hires and moves yep. that have been made by then.